Well, g'day, welcome to another episode of Swarf and Chips. So, the next mission, and it is a mission, <laughs> is to create a tool post for the ball turner. So, the tool has to sit two and a quarter inches above the surface of the, the ball turner attachment. So, this scratched my head for a, for a fair while how, the, how am I going to do this? So, with limited resources, I like material, so you know, I've got a big square block here, old gnarly old thing. Well, that was looking promising, I could mill something up out of that. The original idea was a piece of steel plate, which I was going to cut the section out and make a, like a straddle clamp with spaces underneath. And then my latest idea is I found this off-cut, just off an old axle. So what I might try and do, I think we'll just turn this, or oh, we'll lock, lock this off. And we'll turn this part into an, down into an eccentric, so it will be this part scalloped out, and which will sit that way with the tool sitting on top. So I'll chuck this up in, in the lathe, I'll have a bit of a play around to it. And then we'll bring you back in. <laughs> By then I might have a, a clearer <coughs> thought path on where I'm going with this thing. So, bring you back. Okay, so I'm just machining all the gnarly rubbish off the end of this. And that'll give us a blank which I'll part off. So, we'll scrap in. And we'll just be left with the main uh, larger body of the part. Set it so we can machine in that 45mm diameter feature. So our part diameter, the OD is 69 millimeters, and we want a 45mm diameter feature machine down the, down the length of it. So that leaves an uh, 24 mil, which you have to take half of that. So 12 mil, the part will have to be offset which is 472 and a half thou. So we'll get that a bit closer by ruler, then we'll put a clock gauge on it. So if I just move the jaw out 12 millimeters, we reset the part across, Okay, looks pretty even. Start to put our jaw protectors in now. We have to use these because we're only gripping on the very corner of the jaw there. So we don't really want to damage. Start putting large marks in the part this early in the piece. That just creates us more work later on because we've got to polish them out. first is, is clock up lengthwise along the part. Just get it reasonably within the ballpark that way.
come in close to the chuck. When we come out to the end of the part. Okay, so we're dropping away 15 thou. So we just tap the part over 15 thou. Five thou to go. Okay, that's within two thou. That's close enough. To for now. So now we check our total offset. It should be uh, 945 thou, or 24 millimeter. So we've offset the part half of the offset we need and now when we measure it, the total offset we measure now which will be 945. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, just coming around now. Okay, so we've overshot, so we've got to bring it back. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty. Gotta bring it back about a millimeter. So we'll just a little wee bit at a time. Check that. Recheck the parallel. Okay, we're a thou out for parallel. Happy with that. So recheck our offset. Zero. It's a bit monotonous, but uh, there's no other way to do it. Okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 900, 10, 20, 30, 40, 6, 946 offset. So that's within a thou. And we're within a thou parallel, so we'll call that one good. It's a lot of messing around setting up for jobs like this, so we'll put a tool in. Uh, first, we'll just see how how unbalanced it's going to run. So we better start off on a slow speed. If your forge jaw chuck has slots, T-slots in here, this is the time where you would put in a um, couple of counterbalance weights just to offset the mess. That handled that all right, we'll bring her up to the next, next speed. Doesn't like that, so. trial cut we'll see how it goes one thing we don't want to do is crash the tool into the part at the start so we'll just get a pretty close and just... ok 
Okay. <laughs> looking all right that's starting to chomp away at it bit at a time so I'll keep keep progressing I'm only taking light cuts only taking 20 thou depth of cut so we'll keep going Chomping our way through it now. We're about half, or not quite halfway through, so fair way to go yet. Fair way to go, so I might call it a night tonight and continue this in the morning. Well, okay, so now we have our offset roughed out. So what 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 the next plan is now is we freehand this radius. Just on this angle part here, we've got to cut that to a radius. So it will blend in with this surface and this face here. So our 45 mil diameter there, we're still 0.5 of a mil diameter up on size. So as our radius blends in, this, uh, you can see it there, section there through to there will blend into a perfect circle so there'll be no visible step at the back of the, of the um, part there so we'll get a tool set up and start freehanding this radius in okay so we've swapped out our CNMG tool that we used to do all the roughing so now we've got our DNMG so we'll use that to start blending this radius in so we'll give it a crack Just a matter of working the compound and the cross slide in sync with each other. not actually looking at the tool when I'm doing this what I'm doing is eyeballing across the opposite side of the work to the tool so I'm looking here to see what the tools doing over here and that way I get a clear vision of how the radius is generating that's coming along there it's getting there 
continue on. I don't like doing this with a form tool. Some, you know, smaller radiuses sometimes you can if it has to be a more um, defined radius with regards to accurate measurements. Yeah, use a form tool, but uh, the more radiuses you do freehand, the better you get at it. It's just practice, so we'll continue on. Okay, that should be our last cut. perfect blend line and our transition from our 45 diameter to the, our larger diameter. No step there at all, that's that come up absolutely spot on. Nice radius, that's perfect. So we'll give that a polish up and then we'll uh, move on for cutting this slot for the tool. Okay, we've um, finished machining the offset parts for the tool holder. So what we have to do next is machine the slot in the top here to take the tool. So that tool will recess down into the holder and then we'll make a flat plate to hold it in position. So I was actually hoping to do all this in one one session, one episode, but it's honestly by the time I, with the setup involved for the slot and drilling the mounting holes, um, I'm going to have to break it into another episode. So I do want to show you the setup for how we get our perpendicular measurements um, off the offsets for the tool holder. So it's quite a bit of an interesting setup. So we'll make We'll conclude this one and um, watch out for the next episode. Take care. See you later. Well, we've got some visitors in the shop today. Maybe a couple of prospective machinists. What do you reckon? Chook, 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 chook. Chook, 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 chook. Ha, ha, ha.